GG. The curve. Almost spilling my coffee, okay. That is um that is a little bit sus. Very sus. Coffee with two espresso shots. Let's go. Let's talk about the curve. What is it? Why do we need it? Do we need it? I, I'm just gonna jump in, you know? Understand understanding a champion's strength at different stages of the game. Basically, that's the point of the curve. When I think about the curve, it's basically that's how the champion is supposed to scale at a normal scaling level. You know, if everybody in the game would just last it perfectly, never fight, that's how strong the champion should be at that state. You know, but that's kind of the curve. And when I started thinking about this, it was when I played Ari, and I knew, okay, if I. If it was decently early in the game and my Q one-shots the backline, I knew I was on curve with my scaling because I was strong enough to one-shot the backline and then impact the map or whatever, right? It's kind of my idea of the curve. And it boils down to understanding how strong a champion should be at different stages with different items so you can assess the situation, make good decisions around it, the same is for your teammates, champions, of course, and enemy team. I'm a little bit sick, so excuse me a little bit, but let me take a sip of my coffee as well. Ah, it's also very cold, but anyways. If you're ahead of the curve, that means you can make plays work that were usually, if you're just on normal curve, they would be illegal, you know? They would not work. If you go in 1v5, you're doing some crazy dives. They shouldn't be possible, but because you're so far ahead, you're ahead of the curve, You they will work still. And you can do this, you know? That is why proficient players can snowball much more heavily in lower elos, pretty much, you know? They will be ahead of the curve, and it's also in relationship to everyone else. So maybe, maybe uh, challenger players will just be on curve, but everybody else will be below curve, you know, behind in the curve. And that you, if you're behind in the curve, you you would lose plays that usually should be possible. If you're in a in a matchup that favors you, you know, any assassin into AD carry in the side lane. Let's think about it. You know, if you are so far behind on an assassin uh, that you lose against the AD carry, you would be behind in the curve. You know, both on curve should. The assassin should win, because that's his job, right? If that's not the case, there could also be the balancing issues in the game. Also, this has nothing to do with the game plan, by the way. Like, you always want to play around objectives to close out the game, no matter if you're strong or weak. You know, if you're ahead or behind in the curve, whatever you do is whatever you do, you know? You have to do it anyways. You have to try stuff to win the game, even if you're behind the curve. And if you're ahead on the curve, you shouldn't try to force end the game. You should still take the objectives and then you can end the game cleanly, right? Because I, I see people, you know, they get ahead. They have, they're like 23 and then they smash their head into tier 3 turrets without taking Baron for no reason. And they're making the game so difficult. And then it's like four people diving I see it sometimes in this ELO even, you know? I think it's so useless. Like, it's so obvious kind of what you have to do. Um, if if you think about it like an objective-based game, which it is, you just, um, yeah, you'll just cl close out the game cleanly if you focus on the objectives. Take the dragons, take the barons. If you're ahead in curve, <clears throat> you can limit test maybe a little bit more. And if you're behind the curve, you can also limit test, but you have to understand if you lose when you're behind the curve, you probably overextended or overstepped, you know. That's just um, that's just what the curve is. And I, as I said, I noticed it when I played Ari, um, when I could like one shot the backline. I think with Orion Soul is like when he hits level nine. If you hit level nine on Orion Soul, you cannot one shot. 
the the wave i think you're behind curve type of deal something like that you know you can kind of think about it like that the power of his champion how much power should a champion have at a given stage in the game and knowing that it helps a lot with like consistency because you can behave in different like you can behave in sa same ways even though it's a different game if i play ari and i can one shot the backline i know okay if I want to this backline, I can impact something else on the map, right? So you try to get to that point, you're on curve, you're behaving in the power of your champion, that which it is, you have your ult, one shot the wave, and then impact the map, you know? You can do that. You can also do that in the side lane, you know, later in the game. If you have a character that has a lot of wave clear, one shot the side lane, move away to the objective, push it further. If you're a strong 1v1 champion, if you're on curve, you can control the side lane completely, maybe even bully the enemy side laner off of it, get a tier 2 turret, things like that, you know? Just basically thinking about champion strength as a curve. You're not going to start off strong and you're not going to end strong in a sense, you know? if You're, you're going to be strong at different stages of the game. I like to think of it like this, uh, this curve model. Maybe it's uh, a little bit counterintuitive, but when I started playing, that's kind of what my brain came up with, I feel like. That's what my brain kind of thought about, you know, how it should work type of deal. Uh, thinking about champion strength, yeah. If I'm ahead on Aurora, you know, that's the thing with Aurora, I think. If Aurora's ahead, ahead of, the, of the curve, you know. Like, the last game you see up here, my entire team was just inting. I mean, literally. Not even joking. We had a griefing AD carry who came mid lane after inting in his lane. Every single player here was inting in this team, you know? But I won my lane. <laughs> so I won my lane. I was ahead of, in the curve, ahead of the curve. Good CS, everything, and that's that basically got us back into the game. You know, I just one shot five people if I'm ahead of the curve as Aurora. That's that's kind of the power of the champion. If I'm behind of the curve, I could not engage. You know, if I was falling behind as well in this game and I could not engage because they would just blow me up, right? I couldn't side lane into, into Silas, he would just blow me up. He would lose. Simple as that. You know, I won because I was ahead of the curve this game. And you can have a lot of impact if you are. So. That's pretty much my example. That's the topic. It's a kind of a shorter video today, but it's also not like a super complicated concept. It's more like a paradigm, maybe, to view champion strength through. I hope my um, I don't sound too sick, you know, so it's not too annoying to listen to this, but appreciate it either way. Uh, thank you for watching and have a nice day. Okay, enjoy, enjoy. Get some protein. Have they forgotten us yet, little lamb? All still know us, though they try to forget. Soon, we will remind them.